Good morning, and welcome to University Baptist Church this Sunday, May 10th, 2020. The gathering, message, and departure music for this morning's service is all taken from the vast library of archival recordings made possible by Matt Monjot, who for years has been faithfully recording our in-person service music, sermons, and other special presentations. I would like to once again thank him, Kay, and all those who have helped create this wonderful resource for us, a resource which has been greatly appreciated and useful during this time of worship from a distance. Our departure music, sung by Alyssa Schott, Kay Clopton, Jacob Heacock, and myself in May of 2019, is a piece well known to members of the choir and choral singers the world around, Peter Lutkin's cherished benediction, The Lord Bless You and Keep You. The words, taken from Numbers 6, 24 through 26, are, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. I invite anyone who knows this beloved anthem to sing along with the quartet at the close of the service. In like fashion, please join in singing the doxology after our time of offering this morning, and sing along with Molly Rausch, our UBC accompanist, as she plays Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying prior to the prayers of the people. Our message in music this morning has special ties to the UBC family. Trust in the Lord for choir, congregation, piano accompaniment, and flute soloist was written by John Carter, well-known sacred music composer and former minister of music here at University Baptist Church. The words, adapted from several biblical sources, were written by his wife and fellow composer, Mary Kay Beale. The flute soloist is Ashley Hart, now Ashley Biedenharn, our former soprano section leader. Several times throughout the choir's performance of this anthem, recorded in February of 2018, you will see me turn to cue in the congregation. I invite you all to sing along with the refrain at these times, the words of which are, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, in all your ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord, trust in the Lord and he will direct your path. And finally, our introit this morning comes from a November 2019 performance of the anthem Heavenly Light by Alexander Kopilov. This beautiful anthem has become a new staple for the UBC choir over the past year, and its words remind us, as does our John chapter 14 scripture reading for this morning, of the divine nature of Christ and the salvation he has made possible for us. Sent from heaven, thy rays were given, on great and small to shine. O light divine, may each soul in sorrow's night see the heavenly light. Thou blessing to all creation, lead us to our salvation. All those whose feet may falter, lead unto the sacred altar. O shine from above, divine light of love. Show us the way unto our God, we pray. Thou our beacon and guide shalt be. Light divine, we praise thee. I invite you all to rise in your spirits and to rejoice in the heavenly light of Christ. May you trust in the Lord with all your heart, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. Good morning, and welcome to University Baptist Church.
Welcome to University Baptist Church. I'm Ken Watkins, the Associate Pastor. Uh, this is the fifth Sunday of the Easter season, but every Sunday we gather as an Easter people, a community that recognizes our need for God's love and God's strength, a congregation of believers and seekers who find hope in the presence of God, whom we encounter through music, prayers, scripture, preaching, and the lives of others. Today, like most churches, we are incomplete because our members are scattered and isolated. But we rejoice to see those in this video and we think of others that we long to see. If you're watching this on Facebook, please take a moment to post a word of welcome in one of the comment spaces. If you're watching this as a watch party on Facebook, you may find several ways to respond to this service. I invite you to participate as fully as you can. Today, people across the U.S. are celebrating Mother's Day. With the social distancing that we are practicing for the safety of our mothers and others, most of us will celebrate without actual physical contact. As I lead us in this Mother's Day blessing, let us remember with gratitude the women who have touched our lives. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love. We pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. We pray to the Lord. For women, though without children of their own, who like mothers have nurtured and cared for us, we pray to the Lord. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nourishment to her children, so you watch over your church. Bless these women, that they may be strengthened as Christian mothers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. My name's Pat Rohrbaugh, and I'm here with my family. Back here is Virgil Anastasius Popa, my <laughs> son-in-law. And then the tall guy back behind me, right beside him, who's almost up there at his height, is Nicholas. Beside me, and if we were standing, we'd be even, is Matthew. And my daughter, Kathy, who will be the leader for the call to worship. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again. We gather, gather in, in this place, place to know your presence and your, your love, love now and always. always. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And if you know me, you know God. We, we pray, pray to, to know you more, more deeply that we may know God more intimately now and always. Jesus said, ask me for anything and I will do it. Help us to ask for the right things, Lord Jesus Christ, that we may fulfill your will now and always. Jesus said, believe in me and follow me. Help us to worship you fully believing and following now and always. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of spring, thank you for red bud blossoms and dogwood. 
for azaleas and rhododendron. As we watch new shoots break through the earth, we know flowers will follow. We realize new life is soon to be. On this Mother's Day, we are thankful for our mothers who loved and nurtured us. For many of us, they are the ones who took us to church for the first time. This morning, we come before you looking for guidance in the week ahead. Speak to each of us. Be a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. Please join me as we repeat the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello everyone, I hope you're staying safe, and staying healthy, and doing well with everything going on right now. Um, this week's scripture reading is John chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it.
To, to begin today by wishing all of the mothers that are participating in this service a happy Mother's Day. Hope you'll have, uh, have a wonderful day on this Mother's Day. And I also would like to welcome everyone who is participating in this service of worship. We do trust and pray that, that God will bless will bless you and what we are going to share together today. Please bow with me for this moment of prayer. Oh, good and gracious God, we are, are thankful for the privilege of, of gathering, and God, we thank you for this passage of Scripture. And we pray, God, that as we meditate on, on John 14, you would open, open our hearts and our minds and we pray, Lord, that we would receive something that would re be a real blessing and comfort to us. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would speak to us through this word of Scripture. Amen. Our Bible reading for today contains much that is familiar. The first few verses often are, are read at funeral or memorial services. Even people that, that aren't very active in the life of the Christian community or don't know very much about, about the Bible may be familiar with these words of Scripture. So I, I read John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. We read there. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. And then if we read a little further down in the, the sixth verse, we, we hear the remarkable words that Jesus speaks. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Indeed, there is much that is familiar in John chapter 14. But today, as we share together, we attempt to hear those words, those familiar words, in a new way. And we start where John 14 starts. Jesus says to his disciples in those words that we read just a moment ago, do not let your hearts be troubled. And, as, and the disciples were troubled. Their hearts were troubled. You know, as often is the case when we study the scripture, having an understanding of the context is helpful. And here the context is that 
that our passage of scripture is part of a, a long speech that Jesus shares with his disciples. It spans chapters 13 through 17 of John's gospel. And so in chapter 13, the chapter before the one that, that where our passage comes today, we see that, that Jesus says a couple of things to his disciples. Jesus has, had just told them that he would be with them only a little while longer. Not only that, but he tells Peter, perhaps his closest disciples, his closest disciple, that Peter is going to betray him. Indeed, the disciples were troubled. They were deeply troubled, thinking that their, their Lord, the one who they believed to be the Savior, the Son of God, the Messiah, was not going to be with them very much longer. And Peter especially was troubled. Well, friends, we can relate to that, can't we? We know that, that we too often are troubled. And as we share together today, we, we are in troubling times. As we think about what we've been going through the last couple of months and what we will continue in one form or another to go through for a while longer. We think of the suffering that so many thousands have experienced. And we are in many ways very blessed if we were able to share in this time of worship. So indeed, friends, these are our troubling times. But as we reflect, on the special kind of trouble we are experiencing right now, we also recognize that, that we're not shielded from the normal troubles that are just part and parcel of human existence. And we would be focusing on those in many cases, if not for this strange and difficult time that we are going through. So our scripture tells us that the disciples were troubled. It certainly implies that, as, as Jesus tells them to not let their hearts be troubled. And that speaks to us. The disciples were troubled. And we are troubled in many ways as well. Well, in, that, in the face of that experience of being troubled, Jesus speaks. And he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And he says these words, Believe in God. You believe in God, believe also in me. And so Jesus says that we are to put our faith in him. If we're troubled, we can come to him and put our faith in him. These are words of comfort and hope. Someone has said that a, a better translation for this passage of Scripture, better than you believe in God, believe also in me, is that we translate that last part as believe into me. And, and so the idea being not that just we just believe things about God or Jesus, that we hold to certain doctrines, but that we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. So the idea here is that, that in these times of trouble, we put our complete trust in Jesus. We put our, our faith in him. We depend on him. And we, we count on Jesus. We put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. And that, that provides me with a great deal of comfort, with this, uh, this sense that I can put my, my absolute trust in Jesus to turn things over to him and have his support and love, 
his support and love in dur during times of difficulty, during times of trouble. We can have a sense of peace and hope as we put our trust in Jesus. And when we do that, when we put our trust in Jesus, when we, we put our faith and our hope in Jesus, he does not let us down. He encourages us, and he, he helps us to know that whatever we are going through right now is not the final word. That there, there's something better, and there's something more complete to come. And so we, we go on to the, those words that Jesus says, where, where he says, In my Father's house there are many rooms, and I prepare a place for you in that house. You know, if you're, if you're in my generation, perhaps you grew up with the King James Version, and, and you remember the words, in my father's house are many mansions. So we, we grew up with that, and, and perhaps we think about that as, as we hear these words. But we know that the better translation is, in my father's house there are, are many rooms. Houses have rooms, right? Not mansions. So, uh, but I do, when I, when I think of the, the two different ways of translation, I think about uh, a seminary professor that, that I once knew, and he, he said, well, when I die, I want this passage of scripture read at my funeral, and he was very adamant about this. He said, I want mansions, not rooms, to be read. In my father's house, there are many rooms. But going beyond how that passage of scripture is translated, what it really means is that where my father is, there is a dwelling place for you. And Jesus says, I'm going there to make a home for you. So whatever happens in this life and in this world, is not the final word there. I make a place for you in my Father's dwelling. I make a place for you. An author wrote, wrote about his experience as a young father, and he said that when his children were, were quite young, that he and his family moved a good distance away from his parents. His children had been accustomed to seeing their grandparents several times a week, but, but now that would not be the case because they lived too far. And so whenever they went to visit, it would be an overnight stay. He says that he was worried because of, of having to put his parents out and inconveniencing them when they took this trip. He knew that when they went to make the time worthwhile, they, they, would, have to, they would have to leave right after work and get to his parents' house late in the evening. And it would be well beyond their bedtime. And so he was worried about inconveniencing them. And, but then, when they arrived, everything was completely prepared for the family when they made that first trip. The couch was made up for the children. The spare room was made up for, for he and his wife. And they had a joyous visit. And that was the case every time. And he took from that that his parents prepared a place for them. They made it ready. And so isn't that the case? Isn't that what Jesus is saying to us here? In my father's household, there's space. And I'm going to make sure that it's ready for you. Friends, we can have a sense of, of hope and peace 
about all of that. But there is yet more. As we continue our passage, we, we move to those wonderful words in, in verse 6 of our passage. And there, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, as we look at that, we might think that that is referring to three different things. The way, the truth, and the life. But, but one scholar has made the suggestion, which I like, which is that Jesus is really only talking about one thing. He is saying that he is the way. And if we follow his way, we come to truth and to new life. So it's all about following the way of Jesus. That appeals to me. I, I like that way of looking at this verse of Scripture. And, and what supports it in my mind is the idea that in the early church, as perhaps you know from, from reading the book of Acts or hearing preachers or teachers talk about it, is that in those early days, the church was known as the way. And so when we hear this, it's helpful to me to, to think, well, if we follow the way of Jesus, he leads us. He leads us to a good place. He leads us to truth, and he leads us to new life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So as we hear our, our passage of scripture, for me it resonates with the current time that we are in. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And just like those disciples, but for very different reasons, our hearts are troubled, aren't they? We, we are in a, a, a difficult time. We're having a difficult experience. And so our hearts are troubled. And Jesus says to us, believe into me. Put your complete trust and faith in me knowing that as you do so, whatever troubles you're experiencing, now it, it won't prevent us from having those troubles, but whatever troubles you're experiencing, there is new hope and new life on the other side of it. And Jesus says, in my father's house, in my parents' house, there are many rooms, there's space for everybody, and I go to prepare a place for you. So we can have confidence and trust in Jesus, that we will come out of the other side of what we are experiencing, and that Jesus is going to walk with us through all that we are experiencing. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you follow my way, the end result of that will be truth and new life. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be worried. Because I'll be with you, Jesus says. I'll show you the way and comfort you, and lead you to the other side. Please bow with me for prayer. Oh God, we do thank you for this word of scripture, and we pray, Lord, that you have, have spoken to us through the words of the Gospel of John. And God, we, help, we pray that you would help us to follow the way that leads to truth and to new life. In the name of your Son, who has gone to prepare a place for us, we offer this prayer. Amen.
My name is Isaac Robinson, and welcome to the University Baptist Church Worship Service. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to worship you this morning, although not physically present together, as we certainly would prefer, but still with our spirits in communion with each other. This Sunday is a special Sabbath, because today we celebrate mothers and all those who live or have lived the role of a mother. Today, we ask for a special blessing for all those who have or had the role of mother in someone's life. These people are a special blessing to those for whom they nurtured. And for those of us who were blessed with a mother who cared for us, nurtured us, and showed us unconditional love, we truly thank you and give you praise. But even as we celebrate today, there are still burdens on our hearts, which we bring to you. Charmaine asked that we pray that she would be able to stay inside, at home more this week than last week. Last week, some of her friends needed her help, and she went out to help them. Lord, I do not think it possible to not be affected by the coronavirus and all the resulting changes in our lives. For each of us, there are different challenges and even hardships for many. Some may be out of work or have a reduced income. Some are adjusting to working from home. Others have children at home, which are normally in school. Sometimes at the same time, they are trying to deal with a vastly changed working situation. There are grandparents and other relatives which are now watching children during the day while their parents work. And there are those who are potentially more vulnerable to the more very serious effects of the virus itself, and they are very worried about their health. And there are a host of other issues that people are trying to manage. Lord, as you know, there are times when we are just mentally and psychologically tired, sometimes not knowing how long we can keep going. But we are asking that you pour out your living water on us so that our spirits are nurtured and our minds can find peace. You are the sustaining spirit and through you we can make it through this unknown journey. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We now come to our time of offering. Since we are not together physically, we cannot make our offering in the usual way. So again today, I suggest that we use this offering time to prayerfully consider the financial gift we will make to the University Baptist Church. Again, I remind you that there are two main ways that you can make an offering to the church. Carrie continues to be in the church office on a regular basis, so you can make your offering by, by sending it to the church. And also, there's a button on the UBC website that will enable you to make a contribution electronically. As we consider, as we have this time of offering today, we also want to encourage you to think and, and for all of us to think about ways that we can make a contribution that is not financial in, base, in, in nature. So we think about how we can contribute to the life and ministry of Jesus Christ by serving others and by showing our love for God toward other people. And so we consider during this time of offering all the, the different ways that we might make an offering to God. Please bow with me now for this call to offering. We have tasted of the Lord's goodness, and the sweetness of the Lord is still on our lips. Now we permit ourselves to be living vessels of God's sweet sweet spirit, offering ourselves, our lives, 
our financial gifts to those who are most in need of Christ's healing mercy. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly hosts. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. We offer now this prayer of dedication for the offering. God bless these tithes and offerings that they may heal and make whole the lives of all your children. And bless those who give and those who long to give that we may become living stones of mercy, grace, and justice in the house of your creation. Amen. now for this time of benediction and we begin by hearing some words from 1st Peter chapter 2. We are told in that book, once you were not a people but now you are a people bound together in God's mercy and united in Christ's service. So in the coming week let us love and serve in the name of Jesus the Christ the living representative of God, our way, our truth, and our life. Please pray with me. O oh, gracious God, we ask that you would dismiss us with your grace and with your peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.